Hi there, this is Vahid from VR of Education channel and today I'm going to continue our discussion on how to do things in parallel in Qt framework. We have talked about Qthread in previous session. All programming languages basically provide threads to do things in parallel. So Qt provides Qthread class and we can make use of it in different ways to do things in parallel. Besides that, Qt also provides another module named Qt Concurrent. It's a high-level API that makes it possible to write multi-threaded programs without using low-level threading primitives such as using mutex, semaphores and other stuff that related to critical sections. It automatically scales up our application. Uh, what does it mean? It means that if you deploy your application on a more powerful device with a much powerful CPUs uh, that contains more threads and also more cores, it automatically creates more threads for you and it can scale up your application and in fact response time will be decreased. And also Qt Concurrent includes functional programming style so if you are uh, really into functional programming you can use that you know, with some uh, features such as map reduced function that I'm gonna cover it in future sessions and uh, it contains uh, something like functional programming so you can do functional programming also with this module. This module contains a couple of ways to do things in parallel and you can see this it's copied from the Qt manual so Qt concurrent map and map reduced, Qt concurrent filter and filter reduced, Qt concurrent run and Qt concurrent task. The last one is uh, somehow newer than the others. Today we're going to focus on Qt concurrent run this is something like uh, using Qthread. We declare or we pass a function to this method and this method is going to run that function on another thread simultaneously with the main thread of your application. And also these functions have uh, some specific functionalities that we're going to cover them in future sessions. Alongside with these, uh, base, uh, with these basic functionalities, uh, Qt Concurrent provides a couple of features. For example, Q Future or Q Future Watcher are the most important things that we can monitor our threads that uh, when we use uh, Qt Concurrent to parallelize our application. And uh, we'll also get into these uh, features very soon in uh, new coming sessions. Now let's go to Qt Creator and start using Qt Concurrent with run method. And in the next session, I'm going to cover Qt Future, a way that we can get results back from our thread. Okay, let's see what Qt Concurrent has brought for us. If you watched the previous session, you already know that how we can do things in parallel in Qt using Qt thread. But we want to test a new technology named Qt Concurrent. For this purpose, first of all, we need to tell the Qt, okay, I'm going to use Concurrent option. Uh, in my application and add concurrent in this way okay and then I'll run QMake to ensure that this option will be available for us in previous session I created a window that has a couple of buttons this one start a thread uh, and do some uh, task in the background in another thread and meanwhile I use these two buttons to see or uh, to see the user that uh, my UI doesn't freeze and I can work with that while the thread has been working okay and I have uh, the same option in this session so let's go to sample thread class here I don't need to inherit from Qthread anymore and I'm going to change it to QObject one more time QObject and here let's bring QConcurrent uh, and uh, I don't need one method anymore. Let's comment it. And here also, I'm just comment the one method. And for using Qthread, we have uh, some different options. First of all, I can call another method outside the class scope using QConcurrent. What does it mean? First of all, let's uh, create a method named uh, helper function. Helper function. And I just marked as extern because I want to implement it here. And let's implement it here. Point helper function, and just cut all this code and paste it here. And for now, I'm gonna change the end to 20, and also I'm gonna decrease it to 200 milliseconds. So I'm gonna print 
0 to 19 uh, in the output and the uh, interval between each iterate is 20, uh, 200 milliseconds. Okay. And in do work, I'm just going to call what? I'm going to use Q, um, Qt concurrent and then call run method. In run method, I should pass the name of helper function. Okay. This is the helper function. Pass the name, pass the reference, not the calling function. And that's okay. So, and uh, right now we are not uh, worried about the return of run method. And I will talk about it in the next session. And that's it. So, let's go to main window. Here, uh, I'm not going to wait for anything in message 2. And also, in kill button, we have nothing to kill. And... Uh, there's nothing to connect. And that's it. Here, instead of uh, calling a start, I'm going to call do work method. So, when do work method called, I'm going to use Qt concurrent run method to do something in another thread. And without need to create Qthread uh, instance or inherit from Qthread and other stuff. It's very straightforward. So, let's First, click run method. Everything is okay and something wrong. And I can work with these two buttons without uh, freezing my uh, UI. Okay, that's it. And you can also run it one more time. So it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. This is the first way that we can use Q, uh, Q concurrent run method in our classes. The other option is to call a member function. Let's see how we can do this. I'm going to cut this line and create a private section here, private, and pass, and um, declare this function here. So, uh, before that, let's see how we can pass parameter for this function. Imagine that I'm going to receive a parameter named n that contains the number of iteration. And by default, it's, uh, it's uh, 20, OK? And I'm going to change it here to n. So, if you want to pass parameter, just after the uh, function name, put a comma and pass as many as parameters that you want. For example, here I'm going to pass the received and in do work method to helper function. So, let's change it. Also, here I'm going to pass 10. So, this time if I run the application, the thread should iterate from 0 to 9. Let's see if it's worked or not. One, everything is okay. Yeah, zero to nine. So, using this way, you can easily pass parameter for the helper function or the function that is going to be run on another track. So now let's uh, cut this line or let's comment it and create a private section here, and then declare helper function as a member function for my class. So let's create. Let's add sample thread to the scope operand here, operator. And then, if you want to call a helper function, first of all, you need to specify the address to that helper function inside your class using this notation. Ampersand, the class name, and then the scope operator, and then the name of function. And after that, you should specify which instance you're going to uh, call this method on. So, I'm going to call it on the current instance, so I passed this here, and that was the method, uh, that was the method parameter, yeah, and now let's change it to 15 to see if anything is okay, and uh, code works. Let's run it. Yeah, everything is okay. Compile successful. Let's press run. We can work with these buttons. And yeah, we are iterating from 0 to 14. And that's okay. And one important thing, if you are working with a uh, Qt version before 6, you need to do this in another way. And I don't know why they changed it. Um, if you are working there, you need to um, call the function and change the first parameter and the second parameter. First, you need to pass the instance that you're going to call the method on. And then after that, you should uh, 
specify the address of the helper function inside that class. This is uh, for Qt version 5 especially. But this one, if you're using version 6 and later, this is uh, this uh, works something like this. And the other one, if you want to run a helper function that is a member of your class, you can do uh, in another way, something like this, using lambda expression. And also you can do the code here inside your lambda expression. But I'm going to uh, use this one. Okay, and then after that, um, let's say return helper function and pass 30 or 12 as a parameter here. Your concurrent run. So let's let's run the application. Okay, it's a lambda expression, and if I run it, everything just goes as before, but this time from 0 to 12. Yeah, 0 to 11. Okay, I'm sorry. And also, we can do anything here inside this uh, scope. This is the lambda expression. This is inline function, for example, and you can do any coding that you want here. For example, let's uh, comment this one and uh, duplicate it. Here, I can just... Uh, do something like this. Copy all these line of code and paste it here. And instead of N, I'm going to use, for example, 15. And I forgot to stop ILL. It reminds me to close my eyes for a couple of seconds. So that's it. And here we're going to iterate from 0 to 14. And this is the last way that we can call run method from Qt concurrent library. So from uh, this time, it's getting a little bit long, uh, so I'm going to cut it uh, right now. In the next session, I'm going to talk about how we can get the result from this helper function or from the function that's going to run on the other thread and pass it to uh, other parts of the application. Okay, till next session and new things about Qt concurrent, goodbye.